All right. Hello, hello, and happy Tuesday to you. Let's just make sure that we can hear me today. <laughs> so when you come on in, please do say hello and confirm that we have audio connection. I think we do. Uh, so hello. Today is Tuesday, March 9th, and we're going to, well, actually, before I get into that, my first and most important question for you. Did you get your copy of Self Publish and Succeed yet? Did you? Hmm? <laughs> and my second most important question, if you have, have you posted your review? The greatest gift you can give any author is, of course, a review of their book, an honest review. Angela Jones is in the house. Thank you so much for being here today. Angela is our operator at Book Launchers, and she will be monitoring questions and making sure that when you join and you say hello, that you get a hello back. And of course, uh, if you are new here, we have prizes for participation. So uh, do say hello like Mike has. So hello. <laughs> so yeah, today we have a, uh, we're going to cover the launch strategy menu, menu that we have at Book Launchers. There are four launch strategies that we essentially talk about, and I'm going to break them down for you and lay out some thoughts on what strategy makes sense for your book launch and why we recommend certain strategies over other strategies. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I uh, can't wait. Hello, Tobias. Welcome. <laughs> and so a couple things before we dive into the strategies. Uh, first thing, as I said, did you post your review yet? Uh, we have hit 24 reviews between Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. My initial goal was to hit 50 by the end of March. I'm not giving up yet. We can still do it. But Amazon really has put a damper on the review party. Uh, they've been blocking reviews. So um, we've had a handful of people go to post their review and they can't even post it on Amazon. Amazon's blocking them. Amazon has decided that there's some sort of a connection there. Essentially, Amazon, and I'll do a more elaborate video on this another day, but essentially Amazon is saying any relationship whatsoever, um, if they see that in any way. So it's more important than ever that you are not having, you're not connecting your Goodreads account to your social media. And we are taking the extra step for our clients and creating a different Amazon account uh, for them to upload their book. So with a different email address than they may use for other things, uh, because there's lots of different ways. And ultimately, some people are going to sell their information to Amazon. And so they're going to still be able to connect um, you in some other way. But we're, we're pretty confident that a lot of the connections are coming through IP addresses, um, which is really problematic when you think of coffee shops in small town, smaller areas, um, you know, community, if you have a great community uh, of people around you, even if they're not really close friends and family, which used to be the limitation, you're, you could be seeing Amazon reviews getting blocked for a different, for a variety of reasons. So tricky. Um, it's been frustrating and disappointing for myself, but also for many of our clients that have had this happen in the last few weeks too. And then other people have had reviews go live and then they're getting removed uh, like a week or two after the fact. So also disappointing. Uh, so yeah, you can dispute that when Amazon does it, but so far we haven't had anybody actually have any success um, with this new kind of algorithm or, or whatever review process that they're under. That's it, but we're still gonna have a massive reviewer party once we hit 50 reviews. So when you do get your review posted, shoot me an email at julie at bookauntures.com and just let me know the review went live. So I've got your email address and I will get you invited to that book reviewer party. And it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have lots of swag. Uh, we've ordered new hoodies. Angela has some backpacks still. We still have some of the red hoodies. We have, oh my goodness, we have so much good stuff. We have some new books um, from our authors, from Dale Roberts. Uh, so there's lots of great, great stuff swag that'll be given away at that reviewer party. Okay, so today, if you just joined in, we're talking launch strategies. We've developed four categories of launch strategies at Book Launchers, and we're now in the process of building out a bunch of support behind each strategy. Uh, to date, we've we, cust we kind of customized this for each of our clients, but we're really building it out in a in a process templated kind of way uh, for the future. And I'm really excited about it because I love this kind of stuff. Uh, and I thought today I would share the four strategies with you, kind of break it down, who it's right for, what it's in, what's involved with it answer any questions that you might have as we go. Uh, and that's really what I thought we'd talk about. Now, uh, just so you know, March 20th, 
uh, is our next deep dive training. So mark your calendars. You can go ahead and register at booklaunchers.com deep dive. The subject of the next training is going to be online marketing strategies. So I'm going to have our online marketing specialist and our book marketing manager on the line with me. And we're going to do some hot seats to audit some social media, some funnels, and just really dive into online marketing specific to your book. And we're going to tailor this to who is there for this deep dive training. So bring your questions, bring your websites, <laughs> bring your funnels, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So booklaunchers.com forward slash deep dive. That's happening on March 20th, which is Saturday. As always, our deep dives are two hours on one Saturday in the month. Cool. Okay, so let's just see who's here. Um, all right, Mindful Eats. Hello, Poetry from the Heart, Efren. Uh, Jean Day or Jean Day. I don't know how, you, or is it just Jean Day? <laughs> I don't know which version to go with, but I think all sound really cool. <laughs> it's great to have all of you here. Uh, and oh, Tobias, other than Amazon, where may we review, review the book? Great question. Goodreads is another fantastic place. Anywhere you buy books, uh, Barnes and Noble, Chapters Indigo in Canada, basically anywhere books are sold. But Goodreads and Amazon are really the two best places to post reviews for an author's book. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and Diana, hello, welcome. <laughs> okay, and now, while we're here, uh, let's just do the first prize of the day because I want to reward all of you who joined in early and on time. <laughs> uh, so, Angela, can you go ahead and grab the ninth person who commented from the top? Um, we'll go from your, like, right after your comment. So, essentially, the tenth person. Uh, we'll go with that person, and you can choose today whether you want to take home the fabulous book launcher's mug or our oh so soft journal, which I left in the house. Um, I, I'm working out of a makeshift office only for a couple more months, though. Our our return to the United States is planned. So I'm very excited to get back to an office, a proper office space instead of a kind of a shed storage <laughs> room, which is where I am right now. Uh, all right. So our winner is oh, a Angela's. Oh, Efren. Efren, I think you just won last live stream. You're on a lucky streak. Um, congratulations. What haven't you won yet? The mug or the journal? Let us know. Uh, and of course, when you win, you just have to email team at bookconchers.com with your choice and your mailing address. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just reading you guys. Nice. Uh, that's, I don't know what you want yet, but that's cool. Okay. So let's get into this launch strategy because there's lots of stuff to talk about. So, um, so I just showed you the picture of it and those of you who bought during bought my book during the launch week, you actually have a pretty PDF copy of this. So the first strategy is the Amazon. The four I'll I'll tell you the four strategies essentially. Um, and ultimately, my book launch, I didn't use any of these strategies, and I only share that to tell you there's no, this isn't the four. Um, there's always alt alternates and things like that, but these are kind of the four main buckets that most book launches will fall into. And again, I'm only talking nonfiction, um, although, you know, many of you fabulous fiction folks do say that what I, I am talking about often does apply. So the launch strategy number one is the Amazon 99 cent bestseller ebook launch. OK, the second strategy is the maximum momentum launch. The third strategy is really the Wall Street Journal USA Today Washington Post bestseller launch. And then the fourth strategy is the phased momentum building launch. So I'm going to walk you through each of these. And if you have questions as we go along, put them in and I'll try to catch them or Angela will bring them all forward for me uh, so that I can address them as we go. So the first strategy is the 99 cent ebook launch strategy. Who this strategy is right for is really, and we broke this out, a lot of people, you don't have to have, like when I say who it's right for, if you have a bigger audience or something else, you can pursue a different strategy or you can still use this strategy. But uh, what we did, this is really looking at our clients and going, okay, if you have this and this is your goal, then this is probably the best approach. So that's kind of what I'm laying out for you here. So, so who it's right for, you do need to have some sort of an audience in order for the 99 cent uh, ebook launch to work. So 
generally you need to have at least 200 engaged folks to make this work. And I, I don't define the engagement because some people may have that through their social media. Others may have a newsletter list. Others may just have a really great network that they know they can leverage and really activate in some capacity. One example uh, is somebody, per, for example, who might be part of a, um, what do you want, a, an alumni association of some kind, and you know that that alumni association will rally behind you for that launch and do a lot of promotions, uh, or perhaps you are close friends with somebody who has a really engaged audience and they're going to refer you for this launch. Um, so there's lots of ways to get that 200 engaged folks, but you do really need a minimum of 200 engaged folks folks uh, in order for this to do anything. The goal of this, in case you can't tell from the title, is to get a best an Amazon bestseller, not just an Amazon new release, because it's pretty easy to get a new release, but get that Amazon bestseller flag for your book in launch week. And the goal really here is to just start the momentum with Amazon and teach Amazon who to show your book to, teach Amazon that your book is going to convert when you show it to the right people, and just start with a launch and get that flag for your social media and you know, all those other pieces that a lot of people want that Amazon bestseller flag for. So what's really involved is obviously making your ebook available for 99 cents during launch week, and then activating folks to buy it during that week. So you need to be driving traffic to Amazon. And the low price should be an incentive enough for a lot of people to buy the book, but you can also just add on to it by offering additional incentives if you want. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to kind of do that, but you might say buy this book, you know, kind of like I did, and then email a copy of your receipt to one book at booklaunchers.com at the time, and you'll get XYZ as part of this launch. Uh, you might give away other copies of other books you've written. There's lots of different strategies, or you can just drive them to buy it for 99 cents. Um, this is also where you'll leverage your network of people to be promoting it to their audience for 99 cents. The cool part of this is there's some people who don't want your book in ebook format. Um, a lot of our clients, in fact, their books sell uh, I think actually Jacqueline, our production manager said the numbers as high as 80% sell in print copy. So even when you do this 99 cent promotion, you're probably going to see a lift in print sales because you're driving traffic to your Amazon page. And there's going to be some people who just want that in print period. They don't want the ebook. So that's the strategy. That's the approach. Um, the timing required, I mean, you really need to be figuring out and coordinating your promotion and letting people know it's going to be on sale for 99 cents and to get ready to buy it and that it's a limited time. Uh, and so there's there's timing required in that and there's timing you know, required to write out the materials that you're going to use to promote wherever it's going to go. But this is the fastest launch. I mean, this is one of those launches that if you have that audience, you have that network already in place, you don't need a lot of time to prep for this type of launch. A couple of weeks um, will work. Um, for book launchers clients that are here, that couple of weeks does not allow us enough time to do the pre-sale activities that we like to do, which is sending your book to professional reviewers, uh, preparing your media kit, um, doing a lot of the pre-launch pitches to podcasts and things like that. So a two-week pre-launch won't be enough for us. <laughs> it's also not enough to check your catalogs of your print books if you're going wider than just Amazon. Um, so if you're using Ingram and you're doing a pre-launch um, with your print book, uh, two weeks doesn't give you enough time to fix catalog issues that can come up. But whew, that is strategy number one. So let me just take a look at what you guys are talking about over here. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Diana says she has the hard copy. She's still reading it. Great reading material. Thank you. Thank you for reading it. Uh, Mary Lynn Turner. Hello. Um, can 99 cent copy help build your audience and readers? So yeah, that's a great question. I'm um, kind of and sort of. <laughs> so there's a couple things with 99 cent uh, books. So if you have clear calls to action inside of your book, um, like my book, there's clear calls to action to go to a specific resource page to get materials uh, that supplement the book and there's videos. And so rather than you know linking YouTube videos, we just send you to one page and then you can opt in on that page to get additional materials. 
And uh, and so that will build the audience. I actually haven't checked the opt-ins at this point um, to see who's signed up, but that will help you build your audience. So inside of your 99 cent book, if you have clear calls to action to get people to become a part of your audience, then yes, it can help. The trick with 99 cent books is making sure people actually read them because there's something about a book being free, a book being 99 cents, people buy it with minimal commitment to actually read it. And there are some people who will read it. I know there's certainly books I've downloaded. Um, Jim Quick, I think, wrote a book and it was on for 99 cents and I grabbed it and I started to read it. I haven't finished it though. <clears throat> I have too many books to read in my life. I wish I could read them all. Uh, but uh, so I did buy it. I did start reading it. Um, so the 99 cent has a low commitment to read it. And so you really have to make sure that you've got that compelling hook that's going to make somebody not only buy it for 99 cents, but read it. And then you want to have it be engaging enough that they start reading it and don't want to fin and, and don't want to stop until it's finished. And there's calls to action in there to get them to sign up. So that will grow your audience. It does, like I said, ha have the benefit of teaching Amazon who's going to buy your book and teaching Amazon that your book will convert. So the hope there is that they're going to be showing it to people. They'll put it in their newsletter, you know, their little Amazon email that goes out, they'll put it in your also bots and just show it to people all in all who they think are most likely to buy it, which will help you in the long run. So there's benefits for sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. In and out. Oh, Mike's got bad Wi-Fi. That's too bad. Um, yeah, so, um, Ilker, I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, to be a bestseller in one of Kindle categories that we run, does it total, does it total of Kindle and paperback or just Kindle? Uh, great question. It is separate by format. So, um, the, so my book, for example, audiobook is now available, by the way, it just came out, um, yesterday, I think we got notified or Sunday, we got notified the audio version of self-publish and succeed is now available. So anybody wanting the audio version is now available. So on Amazon, I have three different books essentially in the one. So as far as Amazon's concerned, they're going to track my sell my sales for the audiobook. They're going to track the sales for the ebook and they're going to track the sales for the print book and they do it all separately. They are all different identifying numbers. And so as far as they're concerned, they're three different products. So they do not combine to create an overall sales total. It should be by title. Uh, really, uh, it should be by title as far as I'm concerned, but um, they don't, they don't, you know, create their systems based on what I believe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly, great to have you here. Welcome. Okay, so that was strategy number one. Um, for those of you just tuning in, uh, we're talking launch strategies for your book launch. And we've just covered number one, we have three more to go. And also, uh, hopefully you've all marked your calendar for the deep dive training. It's happening Saturday, March 20th at 10 a.m. We're going to be covering online marketing strategies. So you go to booklaunchers.com forward slash deep dive. So Angela can drop that in there. And then just um, just touching on the Kindle categories, we're not going to do it today, but I'll just put this in here too. Um, I've talked about this before. I think that that's the right link. Hopefully that's right. Um, so the Publisher Rocket is our go-to tool for researching the categories for Kindle. So, uh, and also for uh, Kindle and, and for print books. Sorry, I just blanked. What's the other version? <laughs> the version that's not the Kindle. So um, we use Publisher Rocket to help really choose the categories. We also use another service, another um uh, another software pro program called KDP Spy uh, or KD Spy might be what it goes under. So you can look that one up as well. Uh, and Angela just put the link in there uh, for the deep dive so that you can register for that on the 20th. Okay. Um, so the, la the second launch strategy that I wanted to cover is the maximum momentum launch. And this one is right for folks that have a network of social media contacts and email newsletter subscribers and colleagues that will help you send this out to promote your, your launch week. It's hard for me to say how many, but I'm thinking like this is for somebody who has thousands of people um, that are engaged in some capacity. And What's involved is you're going to want to have launch week incentives for people who buy a copy of your book or maybe even three books or more. Um, one of our, I, 
I should get her page actually. Carol Sanford is one of our authors who she does this really well. She creates really great packages and incentives. Um, she does a lot of speaking. So this can lead to a lot of speaking engagements and things like that as well. If you package up enough books, people buy X number of books and you get a speaking, you get her to speak or do a webinar or something like that. Um, so what does this kind of maximum momentum launch look like? This is really where you're trying to just go bit as big as you possibly can with your launch. So you might be driving pre-sale sales. You might be driving launch week sales, but ultimately you're just really trying to have a, the strongest launch you possibly can. And, um, and the first thing you need is a website page that clearly lays out your incentives. Um, my page is still live. If you want to see just like what that looks like, you can't, uh, the incentives aren't valid anymore, but, um, I think, uh, um, Angela, you can just double check before you post it, but I think it's booklaunchers.com forward slash launch week. Um, just check to make sure that's the right link, but that can show you an example of a launch week page, just very basic, just promoting the book and saying, here's what you get when you buy each number, um, depending on what your time capacity is, what kind of a book you have, you can build out different kinds of incentives. Some people will give access to an online course. You can include consults or tools. If you have a live stream, event or even an in-person event, you might include tickets for that. So there's lots of different things that you can include in this incentive package. You're also going to need email copy to promote it and to give to people in your network who might be willing to promote it to their audience. Um, <laughs> to do that, you need a network that wants to promote it. And you also will want to have some social mini, uh, social media, um, social media graphics. So Angela said that wasn't the, I'm just going to find it here. I think it is the, I think pretty sure it is the right one. Let's see. Oh, no, that's not it. Launch with a dash week. Sorry. I'm just trying to find the right so we can show you. Oh, no, that's still not it. It could have, we might have taken it down. And um, that might be, oh, you know what it is? I just remembered. It's not book launchers. It's selfpublishandsucceed.com forward slash. I think. Try that and tell me if that works. <laughs> ah, links, they're all dancing in my head. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, ideally, you want to have somebody managing incoming receipts, because when you do these incentives, you probably want somebody to check over the receipts and make sure that they've actually purchased that, especially for the bulk numbers, that they've actually purchased the required numbers to get those receipts. There, I haven't found a great way to automate this. There's some people uh, that I've seen on some launches where they, you know, they have huge numbers of people doing this. Um, in my in previous launches, when I had, uh, like I had gone really big on the launch, and I had a lot of people said, like I had probably 700 people send incentive, <laughs> incentive requests. Uh, I had a VA, so I just got um, somebody from the Philippines uh, to work on. She just, all she did for two weeks was process incentive emails. <laughs> uh, there's not a great automated way that I'm aware of, but if somebody knows of a great automated way for people to submit receipts to verify that they purchased X number of books in order to get these incentives, I'd love to know about it. So what do you need to do, or sorry, what's the timing required for a launch like this? Uh, because you really are um, starting to put together a lot of different pieces and trying to really encourage people to all be buying your book at a certain period of time, it takes a lot of pre-coordination. Um, you wanna have your email copy ready, you wanna have those swipe files ready for anybody else that might be promoting, you wanna have imagery for yourself and for anybody else that might be promoting, you have to build that website page. So, you know, generally you're going to want to be doing this six to eight weeks at least in advance. And a lot of people before they'll promote or support your book might want to see a copy. So you can build a lot of these pieces while your book is still being finished, but a lot of times you won't get the final support until the book is done. So to me, this is something you start building out three, four months in advance to start lining up the support to really get all the pieces in place. And then you really are focused on um, getting the word out about this, the six four to six weeks prior to your book launch. Uh, so that's really that one. There isn't a specific goal, unlike the next one we're going to cover in a second, which is, you know, trying to get Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Washington Post, best, Washington Post bestseller. Um, there isn't a specific goal per se to maximum momentum launch. It's really just trying to sell books. So you're not driving people to buy from any specific retailer. You're not, you're just driving people to buy, period. <laughs> Um, this is really 
for me, essentially what my launch was, um, was just the maximum momentum launch. So I really, and I didn't leverage my network in a huge way. And I'll touch on my launch in particular and, and why I did what I did, both from a practical, like what was actually going on behind the scenes and also just from my own goals for the book. Uh, so there's, there's different reasons. So, but the one, this was as close to the launch strategy that I went um, compared to the other strategies. So for self-publish and succeed, if I had to choose one of the four launches, this is what I would say was my launch. So self-publishing with Dale, I was on his channel on launch day. Um, I have, you know, we reached out to a handful of other people out there. Book thinkers uh, did book reviews. Uh, we have book reviews being in process and done um, by a lot of other people, like a bottle professional associations and groups. And, um, you know, some podcast interviews took place. But ultimately, I didn't really focus on driving my network. I just used the email list, YouTube, some other platforms to just promote the launch week and kind of drive, drive a starting point for sales. Again, I'm not I wasn't worried about really maximizing that sales uh, for a variety of reasons. So we'll come back to that shortly. Um, so the third launch strategy, and I'll check your questions in a second. I just want you to know what's coming because I'm going to pause and we're going to do a YouTube draw. <laughs> so the third strategy is that Wall Street Journal, New York Times, well, not New York Times because yeah, self-published books and New York Times, not so, not so common. But Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Washington Post bestseller launch, uh, you can be coordinating to drive to that. Um, if you have certain things in place, um, it's, it's challenging, it's tricky, but um, you can do it. So that's what we're going to do next. But we are going to take a second to do a YouTube draw. So if you're new here, Every Tuesday and Friday, including this video. So if you're watching the replay and you missed the fun live, you can still go ahead and post a comment and get entered to win for the next one, which is happening in two weeks, which would be the 20, 25th. <laughs> that was fast math in my head. Uh, and I don't think I got it right. 23rd. <laughs> Uh, 23rd, live math is the hardest thing to do. Uh, so the so every Tuesday and Friday, when you comment the day a video is released, you will be entered to win some of our fabulous book launcher swag, our mug and our Oso oh soft journal. And so I've gone ahead and entered all of your names. And man, there were a lot. You guys really loved the short books video <laughs> last week, which was awesome. There was a bazillion comments on there, which was great. And that's my official count, by the way, a bazillion. Um, okay, so uh, let's go. Put you into the random name drawer and I'm pressing the button and it's spinning around. And today's first YouTube commenter prize winner is Mary Lynn Turner. Hey, <laughs> have you won? I feel like I know you comment on every video. So if you haven't won yet, it's absolutely your turn. Uh, so let us know at team sorry, I lost you guys, at team at booklaunchers.com, whether you want the mug, the hashtag no boring books mug, or our oh so soft journal and make sure you include your mailing address. So Angela knows where to send it. <laughs> uh, okay. Did that link work? I didn't see. Ah, there you go. Perfect. You did get the link. And Stephen says, Oh my gosh, you're streaming. Whew. <laughs> if I'm not, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> We're having a good conversation though. It's great to see you, Stephen. <laughs> uh, okay, and Stephen's Stephen's hashtag No Boring Books mug comes tomorrow, so you are about to find out that coffee, tea, and hot chocolate all taste better in this fabulous mug. Okay, um, let's see. And did I just? <laughs> I'm not laughing as much. I was being very serious. I've only laughed eight times. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Life is too short not to laugh. I had somebody <laughs> somebody yesterday commented on one of my videos and said, take this as constructive, but that shirt is neither professional nor attractive. Yeah. I ha what could I do but laugh at <laughs> laugh at that? I kind of laughed and I thought, really? <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> So not everyone apparently liked the short books video, but a lot of people commented. <laughs> okay. Um, so Mary Lynn says she's won both of those items and somebody else can win. So I'm going to go back to my spinner. Thanks, Mary Lynn. That's awesome. And here we go. And thank you so much. That means I know you comment on every single video and I truly, truly appreciate it. So thank you. Um, all right. So the second winner is Joyce Robinson. I don't know, Joyce. Joyce also might be the winner. I know she's won before. <clears throat> 
but I don't know if she's won both yet. So thank you, <laughs> Joyce. You know what to do. Email us and let us know which one you would like. Okay, so Angela, don't choke on the water, right? <laughs> we learned that one the hard way. <laughs> if you weren't here when I was teaching the media tips one, I basically was telling people when to take a drink of the water and I actually choked on the water. <laughs> Oops, I was teaching them. I, that was a teaching moment. This is what not to do. Yeah. You live and you learn. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Can't you put a beach scene behind you with that editing feature? I was never, every, I can put, I can change my Zoom background or the backgrounds here. And um, But what I found when I did it, I tried to get fancy before, my Wi-Fi connection couldn't, uh, couldn't handle it. And so I would rather you guys look at this ugly brick wall for now and have us have a strong connection so that I'm not freezing and we're not <laughs> breaking up than to get too fancy. Uh, but I do look forward to getting set up in an office and getting a great video set up, which will happen in June or July. We're leaving Canada at the end of May and going back to the States. So can't wait. Okay, so launch strategy number three. <clears throat> so the bestseller list. And hopefully you already know uh, my stance on all of this. And if you don't, then in this fabulous book, I talk about bestsellers and getting bestseller status and all of the fun games and whether it's worth it in one of the chapters in here. I was just going to tell you what chapter because I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I believe it is... I can't even find it. But there is a talk, I do talk about bestseller status and getting it in here. Um, but ultimately, my recommendation to most of you is to do something like the Maximum Momentum launch and just try to find as many readers as you can. But if you have a really big platform, and most of the time, if you have this size of platform, we're talking, you know, a million people on social media, or at least 500,000 on social media, uh, a lot of clients, a lot of friends and colleagues and folks that you are networking with that also have engaged followings, uh, newsletter lists of at least 50,000 people, probably closer to 100,000 people on your email newsletter list. So that's generally what's going to be required. Um, some of our clients that we've worked with on, on launches like this, they are able to leverage their corporate connections. They're selling bulk books in exchange for speaking engagements, and then the bulk sales get routed through some special kind of retailer services that will then spread out those sales so that they count. So ultimately, what we're looking for is a minimum, the ability to sell a minimum of 5,000 books in a week. Depending on the week, depending on the list that you're going for, that number may have to be closer to 8,000. And you got to, that's got to happen all in a single week. And Amazon sales can be included, but it can't just be Amazon sales. It has to be a lot like a mix of retail sales. Um, it, and there's there's kind of a sales per percentage to it. Um, I don't really know the specifics of that. Sarah Bean, who runs our book marketing department, she gets into these intricacies and is the one that oversees these kind of strategies for the very, very few clients where this actually makes sense. Um, so what it involved is the coordination of sales with multiple retail vendors that are not Amazon. Um, you have to have a target list of buyers. So these are typically going to be corporate vendors who will buy during that pre-sale period unless you have those big numbers of followers like we talked about. You may even offer launch week incentives. Um, typically what we're seeing is it's a talk in exchange for the sale of 500 books or 200 books or something like that. And then they those books then get funneled during a specific time period through specific retail outlets. Um, so it's everything that's involved in that maximum momentum launch with an intense focus on distributing those sales throughout a single week and many retail outlets. It's a big pain in the butt. <laughs> And it requires months and months of pre-sale coordination in order for this to really work. Generally, we recommend four months of your book being done in pre-sale so that you can be giving it to corporations, they can be reviewing it, um, you can be giving it to those other people, influencers in your network that might promote it, and so forth. Of course, there are other ways to hit it, um, but it, you know, generally speaking, that's where the effort goes, that's what's involved. 
The fourth and the final launch strategy is the phased momentum launch. This is for those authors who are starting from scratch. So you don't, you know, you're writing your book to enter the space. You haven't built an audience. Maybe you've you've worked in the space for a long time and you have the expertise, but you don't have a website. You haven't done much on social media. You haven't built a platform. And so your book is really the starting place for that platform, which is totally fine. You know, it's kind of a chicken or the egg, what comes first kind of conversation. A book can build a platform and a platform can sell a book. So there's not one right way to do this. It's just knowing what is likely to happen for your launch if you don't have any audience right now. You're unlikely to storm the gates and sell thousands of copies when you don't have an audience in this space yet. Um, now, we have seen some, some people who don't have a large audience, but they have been working in this space and they're able to leverage their connections, their, you know, the companies they've worked with, the clients they've helped, and they are able to gain traction, which is great. It becomes kind of a combination of the phased momentum and momentum, maximum momentum launch. So what's really involved in this? Well, first of all, it's managing expectations around launch so that you don't think that you're going to be like selling thousands of copies on launch just because your book is awesome. It's also realizing that your book is going to need social proof around it. So reviews are going to be really, really important. Um, you may It may be slow to get media interviews and some of the other kind of speaking engagements uh, until you have that social proof backing up that this book is good. So it's become a phase, it's a phase launch because first phase is get reviews. <laughs> like really, that's going to be the most important thing. And the second phase is starting to get yourself out there so that you create this feeling of you're everywhere. You know you're doing this phase momentum launch well when, you know, three months after your book comes out, you start to get comments like, I saw you everywhere. I saw you on that podcast. And now here you are on this live stream or here you are on this clubhouse. Oh, speaking of clubhouse, who's on clubhouse? Anybody? You guys on clubhouse? We have a club. Um, it's called Author Authority. Uh, join it. Uh, connect with us, myself and Sarah Bean, who uh, is our book marketing manager. We're going to start creating content to feature author experts. And also, we'll, we'll start a room as well, talking about books and writing books and marketing books and that kind of stuff as well. So we're just making the plan for the content that we're going to be regularly creating and working with clients and other author experts to create. But um, just a side note, <laughs> Clubhouse, author authority, check it out. Um, I'll post the logo in the community tab afterwards. So you guys know what you're looking for. Uh, okay, so what you need for the phased momentum launch, you're going to need a great author website, and an opt in incentive and a clear strategy to grow your audience and leverage all media. What I don't want to see happen with somebody who doesn't have an audience is you start getting media wins like podcast interviews, newsletter articles, and things like that. And you're driving people to a website that doesn't have an invitation with a really clear, beautiful opt-in um, at the top of your page. In fact, where I when I'm on um, when I'm on a lot of podcasts, I'll either send them to YouTube because then I make friends. <laughs> this is where I hang out, so this is where I often send people. Or I'm saying, hey, listen, go to booklaunchers.com forward slash seven steps and download our seven steps to write a book that will sell. It's a great workbook. And then you'll be on the launch letter and we can stay connected and I can, you know, give you guidance to write a book um, and market it. And so that's where I would often drive people. And that's what I want you to do if you're in this phased momentum launch. Don't send people to 40 different places when you're doing these interviews. Give them one place, have it be an opt-in and or have it be your website with a clear really enticing opt-in on the top part of that website so that you can be using this to build your audience. You do want to have at least one social media profile. Um, you know, I'm not saying spend a bunch of time on social media, but it does really play into a lot of podcasters and other places are looking for people who do have followings and social media out there uh, and be posting a steady stream of relevant content for the most part. You can get away without it but it really does help. Um, you're going to want a book army team so that that book army is activated like you guys were. You were fantastic. So many of you here that are on this, <laughs> uh, that are on this session right now, uh, were part of my book army and part of getting, you know, the 25 reviews that we talked about earlier today. Um, you know, we've, we would have had at least 30 uh, if we hadn't had Amazon shutting us down on some of these things, but that's okay. We'll just keep going. It's fine. Um, it just gives us more, more things to learn 
like more things to work from. But the book army was fantastic. You guys were engaged. There was reviews. Like the second the book went live, you guys were posting reviews. So you want to create a book army that's going to go live uh, and post reviews. Uh, and it needs to be as far removed from your relationships as possible, your close friends, um, because Amazon can sniff that out. Uh, you're going to be need to be networking so that you have other people uh, who are going to be promoting you, sharing you, getting you out, getting the word out there about you and your book. Uh, and then you're going to want to layer on ads, ebook giveaway deals, uh, some some other kind of promotional things that are a fit to just over time really layer this on. So it's reviews, it's exposure, it's leveraging that exposure, it's growing your audience, and then promoting the book, doing ebook deals, and then probably writing your next book. Honestly. Um, if this self published and succeed has absolutely nothing to do with more than cash flow. My first book, um, there is a relation between this book and my second book, The New Brand You, uh, because the new brand you helps you build a brand, and every author needs a brand. Um, but at, when I promoted this book, my and I'll, I should post the screenshot the, the sales of the other two books also shot up, and they have been up. Um, ever since we started selling this book. So it's true. The best way to sell an old book is to write a new book. <laughs> All right. So those were our four strategies. Uh, let's see what you guys are chatting about here. All right. Okay. Um, oh, and we have another YouTube prize. So let me go do that YouTube prize right now before we forget. And then I have another prize for all of you folks who are here today. Uh, let me go over to our little wheel of fun and we'll pick a name. It's a good time to carefully take a sip of water. Okay, so our next winner is Guy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Guy won last time too. Guy Blaze, uh, <laughs> congratulations. You are the proud winner of the journal or the mug, whichever one you have not yet won. It is return winners today. You know what? I'm feeling like we should give somebody else a prize too. So Guy um, is still a winner. Email us at team at bookauntures.com and let us know what you want. Uh, we do have your mailing address, but unless if it's changed, <laughs> let us know. Uh, okay, now I'm going to hit the prize button again one more time. I just want to see if we can get somebody new because I know there was lots of new folks commenting on videos in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so let's see. Did we get a new winner? Oh, Deborah Lloyd. <laughs> she has had her eye on this mug for a while. So I'm thinking that Deborah's going to be really happy. Uh, she also said she would take a hoodie or a backpack, of course, but I know she wanted a mug. So Deborah, you've won. Team at bookconscious.com. Let us know your mailing address and congratulations. Uh, okay. So Angela, what questions do we have that I have missed? Um, Let's see. Steven says he's just under 2,200 sales now since January. That's fantastic. Woohoo. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. Um, I knew you were doing well. I didn't realize it was that well. So way to go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, just see him. You have your Android jacket and look on again. Yes, yes. Well, I can't wear this for my YouTube videos anymore, actually, um, because this is messing with the green screen, it, uh, the, the settings. We can't figure it out. Uh, okay, so Diana says, you mentioned before that we should not publish an audiobook until we have a level of readers. I was told I should do an audiobook because most get an audiobook. Okay, so I didn't say that you shouldn't do an audiobook. Um, my video that I put out, and Angela maybe can grab it from a few weeks ago, I did the math on audiobooks because the question I get asked a lot is what is the return on investment for audiobooks? And so I wanted to be clear that the decision to produce an audiobook is one that you kind of have to weigh with the, you know, what's important to you and what resources do you have? Given if you have, a, you know, a strong foundation of financial resources for your book, 100% you should do an audiobook because it's a growing market. Um, it, my book, my audiobook, uh, we were kind of laughing because it came out, I think it was on Audible on Sunday. And I haven't even, like, this is the first time I've even announced that it's available. But on Sunday, when it went live, we immediately had six audiobook sales. Um, we were kind of laughing about that yesterday morning, uh, how it was like, it went live. We didn't even know it was live and we'd already sold six audiobooks. So there is demand for audiobooks. It's going, it has a way smaller backlist. So you're much more likely to be found for keywords when people search for it. So there's a lot of reasons I'm a big fan. It's where, where things are going. I mean, Clubhouse is just another indication that people want 
audio content in a big, big way. Um, and for those of you saying Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, no, but that would be super cool. I love Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Uh, the song is different now than it was when I was a kid. <laughs> I was singing it to my son and he was like, what are you talking about? That's not the Mickey Mouse song. But <laughs> I digress. Uh, Clubhouse is the new thing, my friends. Um, and it's actually really, really cool. And, and we're seeing amazing results for platform building on it. Um, platform being Instagram, Twitter, even your email newsletter list. Uh, just being a moderator on a Clubhouse platform is seeing like 25 to 50 new uh, Instagram followers, email subscribers. People are selling a lot of books that way. So it's very cool. We'll talk about that on another live stream in the future. I'm not a clubhouse expert, so I kind of need Sarah <laughs> to do it uh, because she's really the clubhouse expert uh, or developing expert in, in the house. And I totally lost wherever I was. Oh, Diana's question. <laughs> so audiobook. Uh, I took a really long journey to get back here. So I highly recommend it. The problem with audiobooks is on Audible in particular, you can't set your price. And to get accepted into Audible and to really meet the requirements of what most listeners expect, you have to have professional production or you have to have a really good ear and a very, very patient touch with editing. Uh, and it's expensive. Uh, it's, you know, for many books, it's $300 per finished hour for your book, uh, which means you're looking at 300 or sorry, uh, under, well, my book, I think, ended up, uh, I'd have to look. I've forgotten already. I think it's seven hours. Um, but then there's other costs, right? There's studio rentals. <laughs> there's other costs that layer onto that. Uh, and it might even be more now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I ran all the numbers in that video that Angela posted for you guys. So you can check it out. So 100% you should do an audiobook if you can, if it makes sense. Um, but if you're calculating ROI, it's tough to make a straight up ROI on an audiobook. You have to be selling a lot of books in order for you to get a return straight on your audiobook. Whew, hopefully that helps. Okay, what other questions was there? Um, Len has just interviewed a guy who only has an audiobook. Yeah, so audio only is a trend now. Um, some people are coming out with audio only. In fact, Audible has been soliciting audio only books. Um, I'm still traditional in that I want to read it. Audiobooks actually drive me nuts because I like to take notes when I write books or read books. Um, even ebooks, I like to highlight them and then I print that off. Uh, print off the highlights. So audiobooks kind of drive me crazy for nonfiction, because I want to take notes. So for me, I wouldn't do audio only, but I see the appeal. And for fiction, I think audio only could be genius. Um, but anyways. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and Steven said, I'm taking over an entire writing group right now and totally neg neglecting it because this stream is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so that's all. Uh, that's that's the only questions we had today. All right, so we do have uh, another prize we need to give away. So my question to you is, I'm looking for new topics for upcoming live streams and future YouTube videos. So it's a participation question. Go ahead, put in the comments what, and as specific as possible, what would your next live stream topic that you would like me to do and or YouTube video? I'm going to pick which one that I'm going to do and it probably will be the next one that I cover, or it'll be the next live stream from now, or it'll be a YouTube video because I'm going to go into the studio, so to speak, <laughs> uh, next week, I think, and shoot a new batch of videos. So let me know what you think. Uh, let's see. You should have Mark Ripto narrate your book launch book just so he can say, huh, why? <laughs> <laughs> and Mike says, I like writing in books and making notes. Um, my friend Deb like writes in every single book. And so she has a really hard time with eBooks. Uh, she's also the one that I talked about at the start of one of the chapters that smells the books. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but for me, I don't actually like writing in the books, but I, I have to take notes. It's just like one of those things that I have to do. Okay. Um, if you think of some randomly, you can always email it to us. Yes. If you think of other YouTube video ideas or live stream ideas, you can also uh, send them to us. Anything on writing a memoir? Um, oh, it's that Coach Deb. Yes, it is that Coach Deb. Um, Coach Deb also came out with the first book on Clubhouse. Since we've been talking about Clubhouse, you can join our author authority club on Clubhouse, by the way. Uh, and uh, and Deb wrote the first book on Clubhouse, uh, but it's changed so much and it's always evolving. She hasn't been able to get a print book out because she keeps updating the ebook because <laughs> it keeps changing, uh, which is the fun challenge of being the first one out on a new app that is everybody's talking about. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. They have one basic premise. Okay, I can think of something. I might need a week or two. <laughs> well, Mindful Eats might get the prize, but anything on writing memoir, I'd love to hear it be more specific. So you guys don't have uh, any ideas for future cover a topic on editing memoirs. Okay, that's pretty more specific. Okay, I'll have to get somebody else to talk about that. <laughs> um, I'll think of an April Fool's joke if it takes all year. <laughs> uh, okay, you guys keep going there. I have a couple other things while I'm waiting for somebody to give me a topic so I can give you prizes. Uh, so um, I just said December. Goodness gracious. On March 20th, we're going to be doing our next deep dive training. It's on online marketing. I'm going to have uh, Jacob Pinkney here. He's our online marketing specialist. And I'm also going to have Sarah Bean, who is our book marketing manager. We're going to do audits. So bring your websites, bring your social media. Uh, we're also going to be back here at booklaunchers.tv in two weeks. Um, Stephen Sarrell says, influencer marketing. Uh, we could do that. Uh, okay. Uh, how to tell a story. I attended one seminar online and fell asleep. Okay. That is not good. You go to an online seminar on how to tell a story and the seminar puts you to sleep. <laughs> that is the opposite of hashtag no boring books. If there should be the best, most interesting seminar ever, it should be the one on story. <laughs> um, timelines regarding writing, editing, launching, marketing, interweaving, online course and audiobooks. Uh, a lot. Yeah, we could definitely do something like that for sure. How to construct a story. Yes, absolutely. Ah, oh, this is great. Influencer marketing. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, Jacob Rothenberg. That's very cool. Uh, fantastic. That's a great interview, Stephen. Uh, uploading two different books on Amazon, one for UK and one for US. Whoo, that's a good question. Um, sometimes, yes, it depends on the genre. Where it would be potentially advantageous is if you need to have two different covers, uh, because there are a lot of differences between international books when it comes to covers. And uh, what will perform well in one market could be the different in the other market. It also depends on how receptive the UK readers will be to the American English. In Canada, we're totally used to it. Um, Americans don't like the Canadian English, so we would never, I shouldn't say never, but we would rarely edit a book to Canadian English. Uh, <laughs> but we will edit it to American English because Americans typically uh, would comment that things were spelt wrong <laughs> if you spelt it to the Canadian version. Um, I don't know that the British market well enough to kind of speak to those nuances, but those are some of the nuances that I would look at when making those decisions. The importance of meeting others to market your books. Okay, now there's so many great ideas. Now I don't know. <laughs> now I don't know who to uh, editing. Who needs editing, Stephen? <laughs> but I'm not an editing expert. So that's where I would really have to pull in. I'm an expert on hiring editors. Um, I am not an expert on editing. But this, these are great subjects. This is fantastic. So I think we can definitely use some of these. Um, all right. So thank you, you guys. I think, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go with Deborah. I think she was, oh, no, Deborah, you already won today. We got to go with someone else. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry. Angela might have had, oh, Mindful Eats asked for, uh, Mindful Eats was first. So Mindful Eats, congratulations, you have won. Uh, let us know at Team at Book Launchers whether you want the mug or the journal. And I think, you guys, that's it for today. Whew, Canadian English. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's my English. <laughs> we add extra U's to all kinds of words. Uh, sometimes we use, uh, yeah, well, I won't get into it. It's fun. <laughs> I love Canadian English. I will not stop saying process. It will always be process to me. Um, it's not process. It's process. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. You guys are tons of fun again. Hope to see you on our deep dive training, book launch, booklaunchers.com forward slash deep dive to register for that. We'll see you back here in two weeks, same time, same place. And if you haven't got it yet, grab your copy and please, please post your review. And once your review is live, email me at julie at booklaunchers.com so I can invite you to the reviewer party when we hit 50 reviews. Um, we have so much awesome stuff and I want you to be getting some of this fantastic swag that we are stockpiling at Angela's house. <laughs> Poor Angela. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angela, for being here as well and for stockpiling all the swag and sending it out to everyone who won today. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic week and we'll hopefully see you again soon.